In this example, we find the marginal distribution for y for random variables x and y with joint PDF f of xy equals 1 50th, and that's for x greater than 0, y greater than 0, and x plus y less than 10. Well, x greater than 0, y greater than 0, that's the first quadrant. And x plus y less than 10 is this line right here. So if we were to put some units on these axes going from 0 to 10 for both x and y, that shaded region right there is script A for the random variables x and y. That's where they're defined. In fact, since we have a constant here, you can actually do a visual check to make sure this is a legitimate probability density function. So if you consider this triangle, its area will be 1 half base times height. Base is 10, height is 10, so 1 half 10 times 10 is equal to 50. The area of this triangle is 50. The joint probability density function you can think of as kind of hovering 1 50th of a unit above this particular triangle. And so the volume underneath the joint probability density function above the support script A is going to be 50 multiplied by 1 50th, which is 1. So you know that your joint probability density function integrates to 1. Second of all, f of xy has to be greater than or equal to 0 for all x and y. It is, so we have a joint probability density function. Don't forget, when it's defined this way, it's 1 50th over the shaded region, and it's 0 everywhere else. Now the question asks for the marginal distribution, f sub y of y. So here it is, f sub y of y is equal to, in this case we want to integrate out x from the joint probability density function. And that turns out to be the integral of f of xy, and you know that's 1 50th, dx. Now we have to figure out what the upper and lower limits are. So because we are integrating with respect to x, can determine the upper and lower limit in this fashion. The upper limit in this case will be x equals 10 minus y. That was found by simply taking this inequality, which is right here, making it an equality, and solving for x, and x turns out to be 10 minus y. Now this lower curve down here will be x equals 0, in other words, the y-axis. So this will be integrated from 0 up to 10 minus y, and 1 50th integrates to x over 50. That will be evaluated from 0 to 10 minus y. And what you get in this case is you get 10 minus y over 50. Now you have to be careful at this point because you're feeling very good about figuring out the marginal, but you still have to write down the support. So notice that when you take this support and you collapse it back to the y-axis, y can take on any value between 0 and 10. So that's what you want here. 0 is less than y is less than 10. Now if you want to take a look at this marginal distribution, let's go ahead and plot it down here. Here is y and y runs from 0 to 10. When you plug in a 0 here, you get 10 50ths, which is 1 fifth. And when you plug in 10, you get 0, and it is a linear function. So it looks something like that. That is a picture of the probability density function of the, of the marginal distribution for y. Now is there any explanation for why it starts high 
and goes low. If you want to think of shining a flashlight, let me get a flashlight here at the far end and shine that flashlight out through this um, support. Notice that when you shine the, the light, in other words, you're collapsing this uh, density onto this axis. Notice that you don't get much when that light shines through here. So that's why this is a little on the lighter side near 10. But when you collapse it near zero, you have a whole bunch of density to, to uh, go through. And that's why it is higher here. So that's an explanation of the intuition associated with creating a marginal distribution for jointly distributed continuous random variables.